Hello and welcome to A Flock of Birds. Today we're going to learn how to make hand feeding formula to feed the baby bird. And the baby bird in question will be a sun conure. He is a week and a half old, almost two weeks old. The other babies were over two weeks so they all had to be pulled. Which ain't no big of a deal for me. For someone that's never done it before it's going to be a little complicated, okay? And like I said in the previous video of the everything you need to feed the bird which is pretty much be along that you have your syringe your thermometer the hot water which you see how hot it is you don't give it to them that hot here's the other syringe the spoon a rag and the lid okay this is the cup that I will use to mix the formula in on the bag, I don't have the bag because I had it all bulked up and I threw the bag away. It's the formula is um, Hagen's Tropican. And on the back of it, it says a 2 to 1 ratio. Well, the 2 to 1 ratio, it, um, it works and it doesn't work. You'll have to do the consistency for your size of bird. And we're dealing with a week and a half old baby. So, with that being said... The consistency and it's the first time that this little one will be eating formula for the first time so it's gonna to have to be thinner the two to one ratio eh, it might work it might have to be a little bit thinner that's only for the first feeding the second feeding which will be later on today can be a little bit thicker and I think I'll make a video of that too just so the I can do the first four feedings of a bird so you guys can understand what it takes and so you get an idea and a ballpark about what it should look like because the fourth time today it should be quite a bit thicker than what it is this morning but not too thick because his body still won't be able to process it you've got to make the perfect balance between the too thin and too thick so that way it stays in his crop for four hours four to eight hours before each feeding you got to make sure they're in, his crop's empty, like I showed what his crop was in the other video. And I will repeat it again when I bring him out. Okay, let's get to this. So this is going to be a two-for-one video. Got the cup, we got the formula. Okay, let's focus on the water here for a minute. Okay, you see the temperature of that water? It came out of a coffee pot. Uh, I have a Keurig. I don't drink coffee, I could care less. But, my wife does. And it makes hot water within seconds. So, it works. Okay. And the thermometer. And the video I talked about before, the thermometer works pretty well. Okay. And here's how this works. The little sun conure, which you'll see him in a minute, his body temperature is 102 degrees. Okay. The bag says to start out with water that's 110. Well, my bath water... It's as hot as this water is here. But I didn't feel like waiting a couple minutes for it to show up. This was pretty quick. Bam, bam, we're done. Okay. But my hot water tank is set for 140. Because my wife likes hot water. So this will work. Most other people, their hot water is 120 degrees and what have you. And I cannot stress this enough. Do not use your damn hands to measure the temperature of water. I don't care... If the breeder tells you they've been doing it 65 million years, tell them they're full of shit. And yes, I cuss like a sailor sometimes. So I do apologize ahead of time. If it offends you, I suggest you not watch any more videos because I'm going to say it sometime or another. Okay, back to this sidetracked on OCD and probably ADD too. Who knows? Okay, back to this. Okay, the temperature is 133. The bag says it needs to be 110, like we discussed. Okay. And the recap, the body temperature of the bird is only 102. And just like our, our temperature, if it's too cool, then it causes problems for us. Like if our food is ice cold or whatever, then it's hard to digest. Well, the same is for any bird. Whether the sun con you're like what I'm getting ready to feed, or like the big birds that you find outside. They all have to eat something that's at least room temperature or their temperature and especially with this little one his body won't pass it 
it'll harden up inside and then that's a whole nother issue that I really don't want to make a video of and I hope it never happens again but we know how this works okay now back to this the um if you go above that the 102 degrees you don't need to be more than 105 more than 105 scalds it and you're gonna have breeders say they feed 110 I'm, I'm telling you I have came behind breeders that fed 110 degree formula and they've had infections that I've had to get rid of because what happens just like a human when you drink coffee like you give a little kid 110 degree water what happens you scald the little kid this baby the Sun Conyer, little baby Sun Conyer, it's just like your child. You treat this bird just like it's your child. If you don't, then you won't have the respect of the bird as far as you won't respect the animal. So in a way, it's kind of mistreating it because you'll do things that will be more harm than good. So, But the 105 is the most you need to. And there's a lot of people, like I said, will say this, say that, and all the research and all the things that I've done for myself that has been 105 degrees has worked perfect. So, that's that. Okay, now we will go make the formula. It's a 2 to 1 ratio and I can ballpark it for 10 cc's. You can look up online and see the whatever it is for 10 cc's. But I'm telling you now, you're going to waste formula. So, you might as well just get over it, stop being a cheap ass, and just do it. I mean it's not that big of a deal once you learn how to do it you'll be able to make it almost down to the exact but when you make it to the exact you got to keep in mind that the um, temperature is going to change quickly when you do that so you make a little more you waste it and by any under no circumstances do you save it you do not save formula I don't give a damn what they say you do not save it I did that and it causes problems I was young and stupid well, I went young. I was a few years ago, probably when I started back 10 years ago. I got the bright ass idea to say formula. So, oh, let's try this. So, I microwaved it. I did this. I did that. And when you microwave formula, you got a problem. You create pockets that you see the, the fine stuff here. It's like if you want to take a, um, instead of wasting this, get you some flour. Take some flour and, um, Put it in a cup, put you some hot water, stick it in the microwave. After you done stirred it up, then take this thermometer and go through it. Just like this. Go through and check the pockets. Different spots will be different temperature because you cannot make it consistently warm enough. It'll be too hot in some places and too cold in others. And then you gotta sit there and wait five minutes for it to cool down. And then to me, it's just like, to all the cheap breeders that are doing that, you really shouldn't breed in the first place because you're an idiot. And I know I probably just offended everybody that is an old breeder that watched this, but hey, that's how it is. You don't do that. You don't need to. There's enough of this damn formula in the world. You don't need to waste it. You don't need to waste time doing that and take a chance on hurting the bird. Yes, I understand that it's made for money, but you got to respect them because that's all we have in this country. It's what we have. So you have to respect them. You have to respect Mother Nature. So you're going to get me started on a whole other episode and we'll be in trouble. And defeat the purpose of what we're doing. Okay. I'm starting to run out of time because I can only do like 20, 30 minutes on a phone. Okay. So I might have to make two of these damn videos. All right. Back to what we're doing. Okay. There's my cup. There's my water. There's my temperature. I've done wasted 10 minutes talking and it's only dropped 10 degrees. So you get a ballpark idea about how much it takes for this shit to cool down. Okay. And yeah, it's a cheap cup. And it's all right. It's for demonstration. So it's not that big of a deal. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dump me some water in there. And yes, you're going to waste the formula. So you might as well just get over it now. We all do it. Oh, scoot that over there. So I don't get nothing in it because I'll have to dump that whole bucket. All right. Let's see. Trying to do this two-handed. Okay. Oh, I made a mess. See? That's a little bit too much. But I'll just dump a little bit back. I'm going to use 
for ballpark purposes for you guys, I'm going to use the tablespoon. I don't need to. I can get down to the teaspoon, teaspoon. But for someone that's never done this before, you need to kind of ballpark it at first. And if you're OCD or anything like that, you'll figure it out pretty quick that you can um, use something that's smaller than this for the 10 cc's. This is what I took out. And if I waste something, it's not big of a deal to me. I'm not complaining. So here's what you do. You take this, you push that down in there. Ah, come on. And it's level. You don't make it heaping, you make it level. Until you learn how to be the exact and you're feeding a bunch of babies, then you can do that, okay? You dump that in there, okay? And I didn't bring a damn teaspoon. So I'm using that spoon. That was pretty dumbass. But here we go. Let's see. Mix this up here. It's gonna be kind of crude, but hey, I forgot to bring a teaspoon. And that's what the other thing you need is some form of a teaspoon. To do this okay as you can tell here the consistency is a little thick but not too bad and that's pretty close to what you want pretty close let's add a little bit more water there we go because as this cools, it's going to get thick real quick. Okay. Ooh, I about knocked it off. All right. Back to the other subject. Take this. Take your thermometer and stick it in there. With the teaspoon, you got to watch it. Because the teaspoon takes the temperature of whatever it's in. So it'll actually hold more heat. And as you can see there, this is going up. And if you got it in the bottom of something, you got to be real careful because having this thermometer at the very bottom makes it to where it's got the temperature of it. So what you want to do is because that's touching the bottom and that's the reading you got, you take this here and you pick it up off of everything. Let me show you. See, it's not touching the bottom, it's just in the middle. And you see what that temperature is? Then you go back down, and you see the temperature rise. That means I gotta start somewhere. Because somewhere it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay. Let me put that in there. All right, back over here. Okay. There we go. Five nine. One, come on, my God. Four oh two, bingo. A ride. There we go. We got that. That looks good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is take and stick that syringe in there because by the time I get it in here, it's going to be probably 103 because the temperature of this is 97, or 98, whatever it is in this room. OK, 
Okay. And there's my 10 cc's. Okay. And I got an air bubble. It is very important that you don't get any air bubbles in this. And after you make your formula, you can take and stick it in here. Stick it in your cup of water while you're going to get the little baby. Because I got the baby right over there, so that's no big deal. So you see what I got. Okay. Get out this little rag here so you don't make a mess on my sterile thing. All right. So now you understand how to do that. I'm getting this little guy. All right. We'll get back over here. Oh, I'm in my laundry room, so it's kind of a crude place to do this. But it's the only place I can find some peace and quiet. Without all the birds yapping and blah, 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 and all the everything else. Okay. I get sidetracked a lot, sorry. That's just how life is. We all have our issues, and mine's just sidetrack squirrel. All right. There's my little guy, or girl, whichever. This is what I keep it in, or it's what I'm keeping it in for the moment. I have the lid for it and what have you. This is how to feed the bird. All right. This is what you're going to do. See the little guy right there? See how his beak looks? He's got two little things right here that are on top. These things there, you see what they do? That makes him pump. That is his, what I call, braille. When his mother or father, whichever one's feeding him at that moment, touches that, it makes their head bob as well. So by it doing that, it helps them align it, which somehow or another, Mother Nature is really good at this, align into their little mouth. Sorry about that. Um, in there, inside there, there's two little holes. One to the left is where the food goes. One to the right is their lungs. And it's very important that you get the right one. Because what you'll see is, as you look right here, this side here, that little tube, goes down into his crop. This is the crop right here. The other side will go into his lungs, which is right there, and now they'll be the end of the bird. It's called the dance of death. It's what breeders call it. Because once you hit that, there is no saving it. I've been there, I've done that, and it, it sucks. It takes them about 20 seconds to die. It's ferocious. And like I said, we all learn headaches and problems. And back then, they wasn't nobody that really taught me. I just had to learn it. The lady explained it to me, but me seeing it for myself through accidents and what have you, it just, it really sucks. Come here, turd. Mm. All right. Thank you for watching this episode of How to Mix Hand Feed Formula for your baby bird for the first time. Thank you. Please check out my YouTube page, A Flock of Birds, or also check out my Facebook page, A Flock of Birds. Facebook forward slash flockofbirds.com. Thank you.